Hey guys, in this video, I will demonstrate to you how you can go about validating input. And I will share some techniques in terms of how you can minimize human error. Uh, this will help you with your PET, your practical assessment task, uh, when you're working with your projects, you can implement some of these ideas. So let's assume we want the user to input a number. In this very simple example, I am requesting the user to input a number using an input box. I clearly tell the user to enter a number and that number is converted into an integer and then I use a show message to display that it is a valid number. So if we give this a try, you will see that here we enter number five, click on OK, and it says it's a valid number. But what happens when by mistake, the user presses the five key and it's a key next to it, which happens to be a letter. So in that instance, that's an invalid number that has been input. Here, Delphi gives us a message to tell us 5t is not a valid integer value. So that's a reasonably descriptive message, which helps us. But in some instances, the message that Delphi gives us may not be uh, so, so distinct, or it, it, it may be cryptic, and the user may not know what it means. Let me show you, for example, if I make this of type real, and then I'm going to convert from string to a float. And then in this instance, if the user enters an invalid number, and let's just type in the letter T, you will see that Delphi gives us the message T is not a floating point value. Now the user will not know what floating point value is. So we would prefer to have a more descriptive message when an error message takes place. And in Delphi, whilst Delphi is giving us these messages, in some programming languages, your program will just crash and it will end abruptly. And we don't want those type of things to happen. So let me show you how you can overcome this. We make use of a statement, which is try. So we type the word try, and then I press enter, and it automatically fills in this part where it gives us the try, finally, and it has an end. Interestingly enough, it has an end, but there's no corresponding begin. So I'm not going to use finally, I'm going to use try and accept. So you can use the try, accept, and then end. So what this means is that. I am going to try some code. And whilst trying the code, it could happen that a problem or an error could take place. And if an error takes place, then you, we will go immediately to the accept. And this is where we can display some messages to say that an error uh, has taken place. So I will cut this code out from there and I'm now going to try it. So we try that code. And we know that a possible error could take place in, with the input, as I just demonstrated. And if the error does take place, then in the accept, I'm going to have a show message. And that show message will say something to the effect in valid input, like that. And the accept part of this segment gets executed only when an error is found or takes place in the try section. So if I give this program a run, and if I enter a number, no error is going to take place. It says valid number, and it did not go into the accept. However, if I now type something incorrect and I click on OK, 
Notice it did not display valid number. That did not get displayed, but except it instead, it displays invalid message. And the invalid message is coming from the accept. So you could use the try accept every time you're anticipating any type of an error. And if that error does take place, you can then display a suitable message for that error. So this can be a useful uh, statement to use every time you need to validate uh, something. Other ways or other techniques that we can use to minimize a human error, I have another form that's created here. And in this form here, you can ask the user to enter the gender. The problem when you allow the user to type is that they could make mistakes. Uh, they could make spelling mistakes, or they could just deliberately enter incorrect information. So instead of doing something like this, where we ask them to input, we would rather have this type of a situation where they would select the value. And in this instance, I can then check, I can have some checking statements to determine which option was selected. Uh, furthermore, I could, if I wanted the user to select a color, I could have um, check boxes because maybe I'm allowing them to select multiple colors. Again, it's not input. They are not going to type, they will select. Again, we're minimizing um, any errors that could take place. Uh, alternatively, we could use a, a combo box like here. And in the combo box, you can put whatever values you want the user to select. Uh, if you're working with databases, uh, you could then <clears throat> excuse me, you could then dynamically read the values from your database into a combo box where the user could select. So these are just some techniques to prevent the user from typing. Instead of typing a date, use the calendar control where they select. A date. Another useful feature would be uh, when you need the user to process or select a button, you could do enabling and disabling of the button. So once they've selected the button, and if you don't want them to press the button a second time, just disable it. And you could perhaps uh, enable another button, which would take them back to a different form or wherever you need them to navigate in your program. So this was just a quick video to give you some indication of how you can validate some input and how you could uh, use some techniques to minimize human error. Uh, I hope this helps you as you are progressing through your, uh, through your path. Till the next video, take care guys, bye.